There are in fact two things, science and opinion. The former begets knowledge, the latter, ignorance. Hippocrates. Welcome back. In the first episode of this series, we saw how false statements and biases are a part of health disparities of blacks and people of color. According to the Center for Disease Control, while over the past 17 years, the death rate for black Americans has declined by 25%, there are still younger black Americans in their 20s, 30s, and 40s living with or even dying from many conditions that are typically found in white Americans at older ages. How can we explain this? What are the probable causes? And can we do anything about it? Let's talk. Episode two, here we go. The main reason these stats are staggeringly higher is because Black American adults are more likely to report they cannot see a doctor due to cost. Even with access to health care, they are underserved or dismissed due to false beliefs, such as those listed in the last episode. There is another important aspect to review when it comes to health disparities, nutrition. Let's keep talking. Let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. Connections between nutrition and health have been understood since early days. But for some black people in America, soul food cuisine is a way of life that is often challenging to change. Soul food involves fried foods and fatty meats prepared with rich gravies. Carrying on the tradition from their enslaved ancestors, black people learned to fry, boil, roast dishes using pork, pork fat, corn, sweet potatoes, and local green leafy vegetables, which were the styles of cooking used by the British French, Americans, and Spanish. Soul food is more than just a type of cuisine. It signifies the history of African Americans, but it has also resulted in health problems for black people in America because of the saturated fat content. Some black Americans also believe that by eating healthy, part of their culture is being abandoned and that eating healthier will not taste as good but African Americans are not the only ones struggling with their nutrition intake. Like other places here in New Zealand, high processed fast food is available on every corner and every street. And due to the lack of time, money, and being easily accessible, this has driven that desire for those high processed fast food. But funnily enough, the Māori Whārikai or kitchen was actually really healthy. We fished, we hunted, we gathered and used fresh ingredients to make our meals. So a century old cooking method that Māori uses is the hangi. It's where we take our kai, our food, and we dig it in a pit in the ground and leave it to cook in the ground for multiple hours. It then comes out smoky, tender and infused with earthy flavours. For Māori culture, food has a strong importance. Whakawhanaungatanga, or knowing where one lives or getting to meet each other and interact, is all situated around food and is central to the hospitality of the Māori culture. We believe that understanding the true impact of nutrition on ourselves and future generations will make a difference in the world. To circle back to the fixed versus growth mindset, choosing a growth mindset to eat healthier alternatives to food is a great way to combat the chronic diseases that impact black people and people of color. Healthier eating choices and habits may reduce the mortality rate associated with hypertension, cancer, stroke, diabetes, keeping people healthier. In the next episode, we'll take a look at how fitness plays a role in this. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one.